Hey guys, you know, it's funny how video ideas come about. Look at my shirt. This is a shirt I used to wear uh, as a regular shirt to go, go out in. Now it's more of a nighttime shirt since I've lost so much weight. I mean, look at you can see just how big this shirt is on me. And whew, I had no business being that big. But anyhow, I was going to bed a few nights ago and as I laid my head on my pillow, getting ready to conk out for the night, I thought about you guys. And I wondered, do y'all know the top three ways to give your beta cells in your pancreas the rest that they so desperately need? Hey guys, my name is Susan and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I have been living a ketogenic lifestyle for the past year and a half. You can catch up on my health journey by watching some of my other videos, which I will have somewhere on the screen here at the end of this video. Now guys, if you're not diabetic, this video will still apply to you. But as diabetics, part of the reason why our blood sugar got so high is because when we're eating all the carbs and sugar, our beta cells in our pancreas have to work harder to try to get that blood sugar back down into a normal range. And how I envision it is our little beta cells are on a treadmill. And when we're eating that high carb and sugary diet, they're on max speed. And I picture them with their tongue hanging out their mouth and the sweat just flying off their forehead like a cartoon, working their heart out, trying to keep our bodies healthy. And in time, they wear out, just like me and you would. We was on a treadmill doing that. And, you know, some people say they die off. Some people say they go to sleep, and there could be a chance that you could, you know, wake them up. I think the jury's still out on that part, though. Uh, however, either way, whatever you want to call it, they no longer are functioning like they should be. Now, how many of you have had a job where they use this example, they get all the employees to form a circle and they take a ball and they have you just kind of toss it to the next person and you go around the circle and you get a good rhythm going and then they ask for one of the employees to leave the circle and so they leave and there's a gap where they was they don't close the gap they just keep the ball going and eventually they ask the same of another employee until there's a lot of gaps and the remaining employees are starting to struggle to keep the ball going around to keep a good rhythm. Such it is with the beta cells in our pancreas. As they die off or go to sleep, the other beta cells are having to work even harder to make up for the beta cells that are no longer functioning. And it's just like a domino effect. Guys, here are top three ways that will give your pancreas the rest that it needs as well as your other organs. All right, number one. Now guys, if you've been following my channel, then you already already know what number one's going to be. Get rid of the carbs and sugar. Guys, when you get rid of the carbs and sugar and you're only eating fat and protein, your pancreas doesn't have to work as hard. Right? Number two, don't eat after 6 p.m. Now, guys, that should be just a general thumb of rule and something you should aim for. But life happens, and if you have to eat past 6 p.m., don't stress about it. The reason for that is, is you want your body to have processed and dealt with whatever food you've consumed before you go to bed. All right, number three, and this is going to be the focus of this video. Number three is this. Our body works off a clock. When the sun comes up, our bodies know it and they say, hey, it's time to work. This is why we have something called the dawn phenomenon, and it happens in the early morning hours, right before you start to wake up, it gives you a boost of glucose energy, so that you have enough energy to wake up. Well, when, so when the sun comes up, it, the light hits through your eyes, and your, the rest of your body is like, oh, it's time to work. So what do you think is happening to our bodies when we sleep in a room filled with artificial light? Well... Here's an article that I'm not going to read all of it to you, but I do have it linked in the description below in case you are interested in reading the full article. But here is uh, the section I do want to read to you. And it says this. 
It's the small 20-person study conducted by Z and her team at Northwestern was designed to measure the physio physiological effects of 100 lux of artificial light on healthy adults while they were sleeping. This light is about enough light that you can maybe see your way around, but it's not enough light to really read comfortably, says Z. For the study, all the participants spent their first night sleeping in a mostly dark room. The next night, half of them slept in a more illuminated room. Uh, this light in particular was placed overhead. All right. Meanwhile, the researchers ran tests on the sleepers. They recorded their brain waves, measured their heart rates, and drew their blood every few hours, among other things. In the morning, they'd give both groups a big dose of sugar to see how well their system responded to the spike. And the results, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences this month, show several clear differences between the two groups. Unlike those who spent both nights in the dark, the group exposed to the light had elevated heart rates throughout the night. They also had increased insulin resistance in the morning, meaning they had more trouble getting their blood sugar into normal range. Now, guys, here's one more quote from Z that I thought was interesting, and it proves that our bodies are intelligent, that even though when we're asleep, our bodies know when there's light, even if it's artificial. Here's the quote from Z. It's almost like the brain and the heart knew that the lights were on, although the individual was sleeping. Guys, even though we go in conscious because we're asleep and we think we're getting proper sleep and rest, we're really not, not when we have artificial lights going on. And that's so, so interesting. When I first was learning this, I only had blinds on my bedroom window and there was a street light that came in and it didn't bother me and I thought I was resting well, but I wasn't. And I have a nightlight in my bathroom and it kind of goes into my bedroom as well. So now I went out and I got me a blackout curtain. I put it on my bedroom window and guys, nobody sees my bedroom. So I don't care how techy this not look, but I taped the, the curtain to the wall so that there was no way the light could even come through the crack there between the curtain and the wall. Well, it at least minimizes it. And, you know, and I shut my bathroom door to make sure that not light don't come into the bedroom at all. And so, guys, if you'll darken your room, if you haven't already, make sure your room is darkened. And if you're not able to get out all the light, get yourself one of those sleep masks that you put over your face. Now, guys, sometimes I can think pretty sillyly about something. When I was first learning this, I thought, well, shoot, I have covers over my stomach. Does that not protect my pancreas from getting light? I can't believe I even admitted I had that thought. <laughs> anyway, the light comes through your eyes, even though they're closed. That's how the light gets into your body. And your body can tell that when there's light on. So even if you have a digital clock in your bedroom, turn it around, get it away from you, because that light will still go into your eyes. And as you can see from this report, it doesn't take a whole lot of light for this to have this effect on you. And it doesn't just affect your pancreas, it affects your other organs as well. So guys, if you're not diabetic, if you're having an artificial light in your bedroom, it's it's hurting your health because we're not really getting the rest that we think we are. And guys, when I implemented this and my morning blood sugar at the time was high 90s. Now, yes, it was below 100, but I still needed to see improvement. And when I darkened my bedroom, I saw an instant drop in my blood sugar uh, by about almost 10 points. I would say my, my morning blood sugars went from a high 90 to a low 90s to high 80s consistently. And it wasn't something that took time. This was an instant result. And I would be curious if for those of you who are monitoring your blood sugar, uh, if, if you're willing to, you don't have to, but if you're willing to, if you haven't already darkened your bedroom, darken it. And then check your morning blood sugar and see what it does for you. I'd be curious to know if you're going to see this a similar result as I did. And again, only if we're willing to. But guys, these are the top three things that will help give your pancreas and the rest of your body rest. Now, I think there's a chance. This is just my opinion. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I think there's a chance that you can heal your beta cells. There might be a, a, a white line, so to speak, of maybe you've gone too far and we don't know where that's at, 
But I think generally speaking, and for the most part, we can heal that. So by just doing these three steps, give it a try, guys. It's been a pleasure, my friends. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.